Hey Scorpio Rising, welcome to your August 2023 Astral Update. It's Rena here out in nature. So you're going to hear all kinds of birds chirping because it is after 6 o'clock in the evening and that's when they seem to get very active. But anyway, um, August is a month where there are some interesting things happening, but it's not as hectic as some of the more recent months have been. Um, we do have a blue moon, and that one will be in fellow water sign Pisces. As a matter of fact, now that I think about it, it's in your house of love. So once in a blue moon, you know, you might find your soulmate. So, but let's start at the beginning with another, you know, that's what a, um, a blue moon is, the second full moon in a month. And it's not always in the same sign, apparently, because I'm used to blue moons occurring in the same sign as the other full moon in that 30-day span. And this, the first full moon in this month is actually occurring in Aquarius, nine degrees of Aquarius, on the first of the month, which is a pagan holiday called uh, Lamas. And it, I, I don't, I'm not... I'm not a witch. <laughs> I think I was. I think I was burned at the stake. So that even saying the word witch makes me a little nervous. But um, nothing against them. I'm just. I'm just feeling my past lives, I guess. But um, it's like a. I, I'm not really sure, but I think it has something to do with like the beginning of the harvest season, and. Um, so full moons are kind of like harvest times because you have the new moon and then two weeks later you have a full moon and it can kind of uh, bring maybe the first fruits of whatever the person has kind of put out into the universe. And um, so this is falling in a fellow uh, fixed signs it's falling in a, the, the full moon being in Aquarius is a, is a fellow fixed sign. So that means it's going to hit an angular house. In this case, the fourth house of home and family. So this could be very um, emotional for you because the fourth house is a water house in astrology. It's a house that cancer rules. And even though Aquarius as the ruler of your fourth house is anything but um, emotional, it's probably the most detached sign of the zodiac, it still will be felt, I'm sure, by you, just be by virtue of being a full moon and being in this house. And um, so this could have, you know, many different effects. It could be that you're letting go of something from your childhood. Maybe something comes up for you. The mother can be the fourth house. I've heard the father, but I'm going to go. I, I honestly believe that this domestic area is more suitable for the, um, the mother archetype. But um, there's some sense of maybe understanding, a spiritual download about the situation. Because a lot of times we, you know, when we experience something like trauma, we're, you know, if we're a child, it's coming from that perspective. So a lot of times we don't understand or we don't have the full information. Um, even with, with abuse of the other person, the other people, like what were they going through? It doesn't mean that the person, we erase the history of the trauma. It means that it might have given us an impression of life that was distorted. So this can enlighten a person. And also lighten the person because they're not carrying such a, a heavy load. Um, it could be simply that you're going to move. And, uh, you know, this is the first step. Maybe you're letting go of it emotionally and then later on it will actually uh, manifest, you know, in the physical. You know, but even just saying, okay, I'm done with this particular area or this place that I'm living in. 
And then on the 16th, we have a new moon in the opposite sign of Aquarius, which is Leo. And that's your 10th house of career. And this is the top of the chart. So it is a very prominent place. And it's this place of our status, our reputation in the world, our success. And I'm saying these things almost with air quotes because obviously um, these are not, uh, you know, the, these things that are necessarily important in life. The, these can be more uh, involved with the ego if a person is trying to fit into the world's uh, expectations. But it can certainly indicate um, certain things that are occurring, certain like achievements. And a new moon here can be like even a new type of profession if a person uh, has other things that support that. But in any case, this is, this is very interesting because um, you did have Saturn in Aquarius in that fourth house of home and family a couple of years ago, or even as, no, as recently as uh, March is when it changed signs. So for sure, some of you have been through a lot of kind of, um, maybe you've, you've had to kind of stay in one place and you've had some tests to the domestic side of life and that has impacted your, your career. Um, uh, if you had wanted to move just because you wanted to live in a different place, you know, you might have had to stay rooted there because of career matters, but now things might be different. Who knows? Um, on the 23rd, we have the sun going into Virgo and Mercury retrograde in Virgo. And this is a friendly angle to you. This is uh, a sextile, which is a 60 degree angle is cooperative. It's coming from the 11th house. The sun in the 11th can make you maybe a little bit uncharacteristically more social, extroverted, going out there and um, be more of a joiner of some type of group. But Mercury retrograde here can also lead to some sort of misunderstanding with others in a group setting or with a friend. And, you know, these things happen. It's not the end of the world. But you might be rethinking a group or a friend. And the reason that people do this sometimes is because they're on a certain spiritual path. And they realize that some of the people that they're surrounded by are not necessarily uh, in alignment with them anymore. And these kinds of things are good to know because they help a person um, grow because they're able to align, you know, align themselves with people who really are supportive instead of dragging them down in certain cases. On the 28th, oh, and also the, 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 another thing too is the 11th house is the house of, oh my God, this is what happens when you record outside. Um, this is the area of hopes and wishes and Mercury retrograde can have you rethinking what it is that you want. And this does happen as well, because sometimes we think we want something and we later realize that it's not really for us. Um, and we're like a, a work in progress, aren't we? So that can be a good thing so that you're not investing time, energy, and even money on things that just don't appeal to you anymore. They don't speak to you. On the 28th, Uranus goes retrograde, 23 degrees of Taurus, and guess where it's landing, you know, or where it's, where is that for you? The seventh house of committed partnership. Now, I've talked about this in prior uh, videos. So, um, I, I can't remember what year Uranus went into Taurus. I think it might have been like 2018, and then it, it dipped back into Aries at some point, so that would have been your sixth house, but it's been, I think, since 2018 or 19, um, exclusively in Taurus, and that is your seventh house of committed partnership. Now, this is going to depend on your personal chart. Um, so, uh, 
So whatever's going on, um, that will be, the timing might be a little bit different, but it, it'll still be relevant on some level, you know? The point is that um, it will happen. Um, and because of, of the nature of, of Scorpio in general, you are a sign that likes to merge with your partner, you, you know, like rather than um, kind of a sign like Aquarius might want to be a friend to their lover. And it's like that's their ultimate um, uh, ideal partner. But you want that body, mind, and soul. Uh, and, you know, this is a generalization. There might be some Scorpios out there with the moon and <laughs> Aquarius, Gemini, who are more, like, detached. But anyway, um, this can make you uncharacteristically wanting freedom. Now, this could um, manifest as... Oh gosh, I do not, I don't even want to date because I'm afraid that I might want to get involved with somebody very seriously. Or I'm just going to play the field. I don't even want to, I don't feel the urge to, to, get, uh, to get serious with someone and to be monogamous and have to, you know, do that whole thing. Um, and yeah, some people, they just may decide not to do it at all simply because they want that ultimate sense of freedom. They don't want to be part of, uh, of a couple. But if you already are in a relationship, there could be that, that desire to uh, be free. And if that's the case, that could obviously uh, pose some challenges for that, that particular couple, for the couple that you're uh, part of. And um, so anyway, when Uranus is retrograde, it's like talk about loose cannon it's it's exacerbated you know it's exaggerated this this unpredictable energy that uh, uranus is about now uranus is the awakener so it means that it can even be the sense of enlightenment and that can be uh in, involved in your idea of like what relationships are supposed to be and that can actually be a good thing because um it allows you to be more detached, not because you're trying to um, punish someone or, you know, manipulate someone, but because you really feel that um, you want to work on yourself or you want to give that person that space. And this could be a time when you start to really uh, change your attitude towards how you feel about um, relationships. Um, it's interesting because you have had Pluto in your third house, which is the how uh, when it's been in Capricorn, which is the house of the mind. And so it can be the, the person's mindset. And that can be the catalyst for you to like change your attitudes towards things. Now Pluto is in retrograde back in Capricorn. It had briefly gone into Aquarius. So now it's back in Capricorn, and that could be um, helping or assisting in this process. But you're going to have to, you're going to have to like um, be prepared. Like if you, especially if you are involved with someone, that there could be some kind of uh, curveball thrown into the relationship that you didn't see coming, like a tower moment, but not. I'm not saying that's some kind of calamity, but definitely some kind of a surprise that you never ex uh, expected. Also, um, another thing that I was trying to bring up that was um, connected to that. Now, I think, I'm wondering if I kind of forgot about it. Um, I think, oh, oh, yeah, another, yeah. This is really interesting because this could even have that um, love at first sight uh, vibe to it because you're in now the seventh house is committed partnership but any kind of transit here I feel like even if you're uh, single it's not to say that you know you would meet someone and 
you would marry them in Las Vegas, you know, in a month. But the idea of this is my life partner, this is my soulmate, I could totally see this. Uranus is retrograde, so there's that sense of the past kind of like uh, in your awareness. But also Jupiter is in this house. So Jupiter is this benefic planet that um, can speak to, like, good fortune, you know, and uh, even has that uh, pro prophetic quality, too. So I could see that happening. Oh, boy. I'm going to have to... <laughs> I'm going to have to do this because they're going to have a play here in a, in a few minutes. So... So then on the 30th or 31st, depending on where you live in the world, we're going to have a blue moon at 7 degrees of Pisces. Now, here's the kicker. It's going to be in your fifth house of love. So I do think that there might be some kind of faded romantic situation going on. Now, um, you know, once in a blue moon, yes, we can, we can talk about some kind of like special love that comes in and you it dawns on you that you have this love that's why i said you know uranus can be intuitive and it's like bam you know this is happening but um in terms of pisces pisces is very you know probably the most psychic sign you know it's a water sign like yours it's training you scorpio because it's a fellow water sign so it's a it's the most cooperative angle and it's in this house of love but also creativity so you might come up with a, an idea that, that for a creative project that's like off the charts you know and that could be what changes your life or even a business that you never expected to i remember when um it was like two weeks after my dad passed away and this was eight years ago i actually nine years ago and i went to a book fair in my local town and there were like some kind of things that made it a little bit not so, um, you know, of an easy situation with this book fair. And I was almost like, you know, disgusted by it because all these dealers were, were snapping up all these books before I even got a chance to do it. And I would always make a beeline to the astrology or the, the occult section. And... So by the time I got to the astrology section, it was all picked over. And, um, but there were two big books that were astrology, and one of them was a hardcover book. I think they both were. And one of them was a predictive astrology, and I really didn't know anything about predictive astrology. And it was like in this time frame that I said to myself, oh my gosh, I could do this, and I could do it on YouTube. And it was just like a revelation. And because of how I happen to um, think of, you know, other channels at the time, I thought, I thought that there were very few astrologers out there. I thought I would be the only, one of the only ones in the world. And it's kind of like strange to think about that now, but I just thought I was, you know, seeing all the, and this was back in 2014, I, there weren't as many as there were when I started, uh, or like a year later, 2015 and 2016, tarot readers, the whole nine yards, it seems like people started doing it en masse. So the thing is, the reason I'm saying this is the same thing could happen to you, where you have this idea that changes your life. And I never thought about doing this at all before that. So the same thing could happen to you. And this could be in a totally different area. And it could be with a, another person that you never thought you would ever be attracted to because that person isn't your quote unquote type. And if you happen to be a sun in Scorpio with Venus in Libra, <laughs> this could even be like physically that you're very attached to a certain physical type of person. And um, it could, you know, get the ball rolling. But again, this could be something creative. This is the business that you own, so it could be an idea for a business. Letting go of a, you know, kind of like a connection to somebody. What are they called? Um, an energetic cord. I mean, it could be one of those or, you know, like an emotional 
cord that you have where you're connected to somebody that you don't want to be connected to. Maybe you're able to do that. Um, so it's what a beautiful way to end the month because I can't wait for the full moon in Pisces. I know it's going to be very gentle and beautiful. Okay, that's what I have for you, Scorpio. I hope that this resonated. If you would like a private reading, I'm promoting my package deals. Now I've added a third one. And this one is literally the whole enchilada. I used to call another reading that. But if you like the tarot and a natal chart interpretation and transits for the next 12 months, I have a, a deeply discounted triple reading package. And then I have like my deep dive, which is the natal chart and the, um, you know, the, the transits for the next coming 12 months for the upcoming 12 months and also one with the tarot that's just a double reading so you can find out more information at the link below i'm at rainamoonastrology.com thank you for listening bye